Thank you. Uh, I'm talking to you from the music room of Phoenicia Elementary School in Antiora School District. My name is Janine Pommy Vega, and I have been working in this district. It's gotta be 20 years, maybe more, I'm not sure. And um, what I do is I'm a writer, a poet, and a poet, novelist, essayist, etc. But what I do in the schools is poetry. And um, I work with second to 12th grade, and I also teach a course in poetics at Bard. Uh, but for the uh, public school system, <clears throat> what I'm basically doing is I'm going in and depending on the age of the child, I'm uh, tailoring uh, literary techniques or writing techniques for the age of the child so that, you know, the, I mean, it's uh, pretty simple, the, uh, the, um, the, the techniques that we use to make writing as clear and as effective as possible. So that's what I've been doing. And it's, it's um, I guess the reason I've continued with it for this amount of time is because, uh, first of all, kids are real people. They are honest. They have a lot to say. And the profound depths that they come from is, uh, is, quite, uh, is quite humbling. So I've decided to stay with it year after year I go in and I have also seen because I've been in the same district for so long I have seen children of former students who were great poets and now the child comes along and she also is a great poet it's really you know it's really lovely to see it's a beautiful uh, corroboration of the uh, the longevity of talent in, uh, in a society so um, that's, that's basically what I do here. And um, in this district, I have mainly worked with young kids. I mean, two and three, grades two and three. Though in other districts, I work in high school and junior high and the later grades in the elementary school. And uh, the school really uses me as a resource to figure out where I best fit what their curriculum needs are. And uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about me? I've published eight, 18 books. Um, most of them are poetry, some of them are memoir, and some of them are travel. Uh, I'm, I just finished a, chi a children's book. Here's my latest book. Uh, this is my latest poetry book. It's called The Green Piano. I don't know if you can see that. Hold it up. It's called The Green Piano. It came out, uh, I think, two years ago. <clears throat> and um, we'll soon be doing a memoir festival in Woodstock, which is um, the Malachi, bro uh, Ma the McCourt brothers, Malachi, Frank, and their youngest brother, I don't remember his name. They're coming to town, and that day that they're coming, in the Valentine's Day weekend, I'll be working uh, on reading my memoir uh, with Joya Tempanelli, who is a very well-known, wonderful, deep, profound storyteller. So um, the, the, um, the aspects or the different facets of being a writer in America where the, the uh, let me say, the, uh, the government does not necessarily encourage art or support it in any way. So I don't know anyone who's a writer who doesn't also teach in some capacity. In, in my case, it's in the general population of the school system, public schools. And there's also Bard. I teach in the uh, Bard Prison Initiative inside of a prison. And there's also migrant workers that I work with in the fields up north. Uh, they tell me their poems or I get their poems from them and then they, I translate them into Spanish and then they, uh, I give it back to them and they have in front of them the, what they had to say in English and Spanish. And another thing I do as part of being a writer is perform. That means that, um, you know, performing poems, I perform with music. I, uh, I have a CD out called uh, Across the Table. In that CD, what I'm doing is I'm working with uh, musicians in the area, jazz, and uh, in Europe, 
a rock band, and in, uh, let's see, Italy, in Sarajevo with uh, a yeah, rock band and, uh, and rhythm section in, uh, in Salerno. So, you know, you just go around. I, I find that if you are working with words, if you have a rhythm, a set rhythm behind you, what happens is, just like in rap, the words penetrate deeper into the heart and you can, uh, the, the, the audience remembers the words, and so do I, actually. I can memorize them, I can memorize them better. And so, let's see, there's performing, teaching, writing, and, um, and the writing is, um, I've, I've branched out now into a novel because there are certain things I think one might want to say, not in just a short-term poem, but perhaps a character who lasts through an entire, you know, uh, mystery, let's say, and uh, has the things that she says and the things that she does, and they're all part of that, uh, what I'm trying to say through the character. Because, of course, I'm using these persona to uh, express something that I want to say or that I feel needs to be said, or, yeah, that's about it. And um, what else can I tell you? Um, most of the teaching now has been in poetics. Uh, and uh, probably it will continue like that. It's unlikely that I'll be teaching fiction writing. It'll probably continue that, like that until I retire, if I ever, but writers don't retire, you know. <laughs> We just keep on writing, and that's all. I, that's all I can think of to say. Uh, yeah. So to end this piece of uh, video, I would like to read you a poem, <clears throat> and the poem was written for a friend, Jack Hirschman, who's the uh, was the uh, poet laureate of San Francisco, but it's also uh, addresses. The, um, the competitive flavor that grows up, looms up in the arts, uh, so unnecessary. There's a writer, in a uh, Russian writer, Yevgeny Yevtushenko, who says, hey, listen, the streetcar of poetry is made out of rubber. There's people, there's room, you can push out the walls, there's always room for one more. Come on aboard, there's always more room. And, uh, you know, if you, um, tackle the idea of an art form in a society where competitive uh, reasoning is the way one goes, you'll see that, uh, you know, you're, you're sort of asked to jump to the top of a, uh, a space on the, on the shoulders of others, which doesn't work. It's not the way. It's not the way it is. So this is about sitting with poets across a table. Now, this was when I was touring in, in Italy, but the, but the sitting across the table from people from all over the world, that's like, uh, in many languages I did not speak, and it doesn't matter. You know, you still, you have a beer, and you know, you sing, and you talk, and whatever words you have, you, you, uh, you share. And <clears throat> that's what this is about. It's called Across the Table. And it starts with an epigram. Niente è più bello che una tavola piena di poeti pazzi. Nothing is more beautiful than a table full of crazy poets. I'm reading your poems, and a huge ramshackle building appears. The light from a hundred candles spills out on the snow. Inside at the long table, Bolsheviks built like fire plugs hammer out their arguments with Dostoevsky youths and socialists from a score of countries. <clears throat> the blue-black skin of the Tuareg singer gleams with Saharan constellations as he sings the language of the wind, the one his mother taught him, the one forbidden in school. Poets group together, lift their glasses of grappa and sing along. At the far end, intellectuals cozy up over the finer points, the hidden references and underlying themes. Somebody licks his fingers. 
the South American woman with the voice of a train wailing through small towns of the disappeared leans in toward the Sikh and his syllables of Guru Nanak. The Siberian shamaness creates in her song a mask of knotted string through which we watch the procession of animals over the northern vastland. A courtship dance of apples begins at dawn. Three youths with a shrieking soundtrack shout simultaneous personal histories of the horrors of war. There's something about the cavernous heart where all songs gather. De la Chao, the Internacional, the jazz riff, the lullaby, the drama of hands over a table among the deaf and the singing. The key is in the diamond in the door. Open up, it's me, in the poem that holds the door ajar. Ah, we've been waiting.